Yo, if you or anybody you know is thinking about doing check fraud, I need you to stop and watch this video because like I always say, fast money leaves just as fast as it comes and check fraud is one of the easiest crimes to get caught up in. So as always, if you find value in this video, I need you to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel so you can catch more of my content on financial fraud and how you can stay one step ahead of it. Let's get right into it. So today we're going to be taking a look at a young man called Mr. Daniel Santos from Florida. And I would consider this man a check fraud mastermind from the way he was brazenly carrying off these schemes. And, you know, he really felt he was above the law. Now, the way he pulled off this scheme is the common way that people do check fraud for years in the hood. And unfortunately, in these lower income areas, many young people think that this is an easy way to get money. They're easily manipulated and they don't understand the consequences of these crimes that they're carrying out. So according to the case documents, Mr. Santos recruited individuals who had existing accounts at various banks such as GTE Financial, Suncoast Credit Union and USAA Bank. And these people pretty much gave them gave him access to their debit cards, their pen, their account numbers, everything that they would need. So he could just pretty much put the check in their account. Once the check clears, you know, the check clears within one to two days, he would then go to the ATM with their information and withdraw the money. Now, in addition to this, the classic way that these scammers and frosters are always doing check fraud. He told the people that he worked with to say, all right, after this, after I do this scam, you're going to go into the bank and tell them that you lost your card. Your information got stolen and everything that happened here is fraud. Now, before I go any further, I want to let you all know. Very simple. If you go into the bank and you tell them that story, you will get held accountable. Banks are not stupid. They know how this scam has been going on because it's been going for years. If you go into the bank and say you lost your debit card with your pin, whatever it may be, that loss is going to be on you because it's expected for you to not have your pin in a way for someone to just pick up your card and go into it. And then if you look at it further, if you lost your card with your pen, what's the chances of somebody picking up your card and having a check with your name on it and everything prepared to just put a check into your account? Like, come on, you got to think logically. It might seem like it's an easy way to get money, but you will get caught. So let's keep it moving. Now, Mr. Santos, the way he was getting his information to cook up these fake checks was, once again, this, the common ways that people do check fraud. He was stealing information. He was getting information from inside sources. And also he was just using fake information from accounts that didn't even exist. So he would just drop a check. And like I said, once it cleared, whether the account existed or not, the bank doesn't have enough time to verify that. And he would just take the money out next day. And he did this over 55 times. And it was said in the case documents that he attempted to go for over $500,000 and was able to successfully get out $276,000. Crazy. Now, just so you can see how easy it is to get caught up in these crimes, in order to do this, the go to way people do it is they, they either send someone into the bank to do the withdrawal or they will go into the ATM and do the withdrawal themselves. Now, he was caught on camera at various ATMs over 10 times doing this scheme, depositing the check and then a couple of days later taking out the money. So these the feds was pretty much tracking him and reviewed everything that he did and had him on camera carrying out these crimes on multiple occasions so once again when you are doing this everything is being caught on camera like you could wear a hoodie do whatever you want but there's cameras everywhere you will be caught on camera and you will get caught now when the feds was hot on mr santos trail he went on the run in florida and this is the crazy part he was flashing all the money he stole all over social media on instagram on facebook flashing the money all up in high priced cars and hotels and clubs and that's how the police the local police in florida was able to find him he put a picture up on instagram and they was able to piece together the background of where he was and found out where he was located in florida and that's when they got him and they arrested him and they threw the book on him this time because he was not able to just bail out like he did countless other times now according to the case documents many people were investigated as, as a part of this scam that mr santos was doing and this is where you got to know when people are making money and everything is going good, it seems like it's a never ending money trail. But once people get caught and they start getting investigated, they're going to start telling stories and your name's going to end up coming out. 
According to the case documents, they investigated someone that they call RM2. And RM2 stated that he gave his ATM card to a friend of a friend whose name he did not know and that he never met before. According to RM2, the person who approached him asked if he wanted to make some money. RM2 said that it was supposed to be a one day process. Like I said, deposit gets clear one day so he could then make money to pay his bills. Life is real out here. I get it. RM2 gave his ATM card and pen to the unknown male, Mr. Santos, and RM2 was told there would be money deposited into his account and he could keep the leftover funds. Check fraud 101. The unknown male also told RM2 it only works with credit unions and that was why the unknown male needed to use RM2's account. Now with that, depending on the type of work that they have, it clears faster at certain banks. So that's probably why he noticed this dude had a account at a specific bank. So this check will probably clear faster. Now RM2, this is when he starts dry snitching, said he did not know it was stolen or counterfeit funds or where the checks were going to, or when the checks were going to be deposited in his account. But he knew that illegal transactions were going to be conducted with his bank card. And for that, he was really sorry. He just snitched on himself. And in the process, he's snitching on you, the mastermind behind the whole, behind the whole crime. Now, this is when it really gets crazy when we talk about snitching. On December 12, 2017, they investigated somebody that they put as TN. Now, TN stated that she had been dating Santos. And according to TN, Santos told TN that he needed to cash some checks but did not have a bank account. Also, according to TN, Santos lied to her and she did not knowingly give him access to her account to receive stolen or forged checks. So this is his girlfriend snitching on him right now. TN further stated that Santos did not tell her he was depositing stolen or forged checks into her account because Santos knew TN would not otherwise allow him to do this. She's chirping like a bird, y'all. Chirping like a bird. TN also claimed that she gave Santos any cash that she withdrew from the accounts after the checks were deposited. So she's trying to say, my hands are clean. I had nothing to do with this. It's all on him. So you see, I mean, like once people got the heat on them, like they're going to tell. These are regular people that you meet through social media, you dating, whatever it may be that you meet through a friend. These are not people that's about that life. They just see some quick money, quick 500, quick $1,000. They're not thinking, all right, when it gets caught, am I going to snitch? That's that's not what we're thinking about. So you, you guys got to slow down when you're thinking about doing these schemes and Really ask yourself, is the thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever you're about to make worth it for you to get a record? I don't think so. And now, like I said, according to the case documents to date, Santos deposited over five hundred and fifty thousand dollars in stolen, forged or altered checks. And he successfully withdrew over two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars. And he did this by withdrawing through the ATM creating fake money orders and making purchases on the debit cards of the people that was working with him on this scam. Easy money, he thought, but nah, it wasn't easy money because they threw the book at him. According to the case documents, Santos was sentenced to 87 months in prison, 87 months. And all that stuff that he got with the money, of course, they taking all that back. So ask yourself, the quick money that you're making, is it worth 87 months in jail? If you're going to come out with a record, a crazy record and no money, it's not worth it. So I know many people think, you know, this is my circumstance is what I got to do. It's never right to steal money. It's never right to steal from other people. It's never right to do check fraud scams, period. Go out there, try and do the right thing. Grind, hustle, do what you got to do. But doing senseless uh, crimes like this is never going to be the way for you to get out of it. You're just going to end up with a record and you're going to end up in jail I'm telling you. So with that being said, that's the video. I just wanted to drop this real quick because this is just check fraud one on one on how these young men, young women is getting caught up in the hood doing these check fraud scams, thinking that it's easy money and that they're above the law. You are not above the law. Fast money leaves just as fast as it comes. Remember that. So with that being said, peace.